Hi everyone. Today we are going to go into the treatment of waste and the types of waste, how we are going to treat them. The first thing is about the solid waste that we each and every city and every place faces and the problems that we face due to the solid waste. Mainly if you see the solid waste are not segregated okay segregation is a main problem of solid waste in spite of educating people in spite of telling them the importance of it people just don't care today the world is becoming so selfish that they're not bothered to segregate the waste which would make it so much easier to treat and um, dispose the waste the second one is about lack of laborers See, as the days go by, the people who are working for towards this, that is actually in the cleaning process, these people are becoming lesser and lesser available. So there is lack of laborers and you also have uh, the transport is not enough. Okay. Reduced. Then the places where they are dumped okay now it should be accessible for people now if you see in many cities we don't have enough places bins rather the bins should be differently colored for different kind of ways so that it is accessible and every day they should see that care is taken to get the things removed and vacated or emptied so that it is clear for the next lot of things to be put inside okay so these are the problems that generally they face not only really this if you see these waste that are just thrown out in open areas you can also see stray animals that go into it and sometimes the dogs and the cows and other things which go and eat these things they could it could have a health impact a very pro problematic problem things can come up in the animals and if we happen to drink that milk from that cow you can imagine how the chain just flows okay so these are the problems that we face now let's move on to the treatment of waste. The first type is open dumping. In spite of educating people, people always have a temptation to throw all their waste into any open space that is left. And in not only that, in bigger cities what happens is uh, the government selects some open areas far away from the city and all the waste are just dumped into that. That's called as open dumping. Okay. The advantages of this is that this is cheaper. You just need some land and that land is just used for dumping all the waste. Okay. So it is cheaper and but the disadvantage that we have in this open dumping are lots. What happens is, it is a breeding ground. Because of all the waste that are there, it becomes a breeding ground for rodents, insects, pests and mosquitoes. So all kinds of diseases can be can originate from this waste okay so that can be a breeding ground then as the waste starts decomposing there is a foul smell that comes out and sometimes if we happen to be in that direction of the wind where this somewhere near this place we are always we'll have to face this foul smell okay so it's a breeding ground and it is it also has foul smell and then the decomposition also results in two gases that is carbon dioxide 
and methane. These are two gases that come out of open dumping and both these gases result in global warming. Okay, so these are the disadvantages of open dumping. Now we move on to the second one, landfills. This is almost similar to open dumping. Only thing here is that they just have, just evacuate some area of land and this is filled with all this waste. So the waste fills it up and every day after it is filled, you have a layer of clay or earth or soil that is put on it. Again, waste is dumped. Again, a layer. So this is how it is filled. The land is being filled. This is landfills. Okay. Now this is, advantages of this is that it is better than open dumping. In what way? There is no foul smell because every time it you have the waste, it is covered with mud or soil or clay so it prevents some foul smell and rodents and insects do not or at least it is less. This is the advantage. But when you come to the disadvantage, we still have carbon dioxide and methane which contribute to global warming. It is still there. Okay, so the decomposition, as it starts decomposing, carbon dioxide and methane, so in that area, definitely you will have Pockets of carbon dioxide, there will be a certain amount of carbon dioxide and methane that's being slowly released into the air and the air that the people breathe near these landfills would definitely have this and not only that, it also heats up and it results in global warming. The second disadvantage is the generation of leachate. What do you mean by leachate? Leachate is something. See, when you have this solid waste and you keep it over a period of time, some liquid will be dripping from the solid waste. That is called as leachate. Now what happens, now supposing in this landfill when this leachate is just dripping and it's just making it moist, when there is, in case of rains and other things, what happens is this water, rainwater, would also wash these leachates into the water bodies. So this will reach the water bodies and it would affect the aquatic organisms. So it is a threat to the aquatic organisms. See, it could be even a small pond or a lake where there are a lot of fish and other organisms. Now, if this leachate just goes into that, it spills over to the water bodies nearby, then those aquatic organisms are affected. The third method is composting. This is a biological method so, it's a biological treatment of waste. Okay. Here what we do is, we could do it even in our own houses. If you just have a wooden pot or you could have even a plastic bucket or a paint container that is, we have used up the paint and it's an empty container. Just put some dots, make holes in it so that air is able to go in and then fill the first layer with some hay and sticks like this. So the first layer has sticks and dried twigs, okay. Then 
going on to the second layer, you have some dead leaves. So it could be dried dead leaves, that means dried leaves. Okay. Then moving on to the third layer, you have the vegetable peel and all these stuff, kitchen waste, leftover food, all this would come, all kitchen waste can come into it. Every time after a layer, you could just have one layer of mud or soil. Okay. And so this repeats itself, leaving the sticks and the dried leaves have kitchen waste soil, kitchen waste soil. So it just goes on alternating like that. And from time to time, we have to mix up everything. Okay, just mix it up. Not only mixing up, see that it is moist. Moisture is important, but no, not too much of water and it shouldn't be very dry. And by two months time, you can have nice brown colored compost, it is called. And that compost is a bio manure. So you are making your own fertilizers, bio fertilizers right where you are, okay? Now this is very important because this biomania is nothing but humus, okay? So this we get, sometimes you spend nearly 100 rupees for just um, half a kg of humus. And wherein all your kitchen waste can get converted so beautifully. If only you could have the time to do this and you can get it in no time. Okay, so that's how you get humus. So now if you go to the advantages of this composting. What's the advantage? Just an ordinary plastic thrown away bucket is enough. So it is, that means it is cheap. And easily you can do it easily done. When we see this, all these things are available at home and there are no chemicals added. Okay, then we are getting something called humus which is a bio manure. Now, we might think that all these kitchen waste can give, give a lot of smell. But having tried this by myself, I can tell you that once you apply a uh, spread out layer of soil or choco peat or whatever, after that there is no foul smell at all. So no foul smell or bad odor. So this is these are the several advantages of having composting. The only disadvantage that it has is all biodegradable waste can be converted into compost but non-biodegradable waste cannot be degraded. So it is not suitable for non-biodegradable waste. So that's about composting. We move on to another type of composting. From the word you can say vermicomposting which makes use of earthworms. Okay, so in this you have many earthworms uh, as one layer. And these earthworms will break down. So what are the things that they do? They break down organic matter or organic waste. Okay. The second thing that they do is they make the soil.
soil plant friendly means they make it porous and loose loose it loose it okay then they add nutrients to the soil their own excreta becomes a nutrient and a manure for the soil so these are the advantages of vermicomposting